Okay, so now we derive the aggregate demand from the basic ISLM model. Remember, the ISLM is a, is a short-run model. That is, prices don't change. But whenever we're looking at the aggregate demand and we make it, you know, we plot it with the aggregate supply, prices actually do change. So remember, IS is just output equal to aggregate demand, which is, uh, assume there is no, uh, we, have not, we have a closed economy, we have consumption, uh, investment, and government expending. And the LM is just uh, real money stock, real money supply, is equal to uh, output times this liquidity preference function, but it depends positively on output and negative on this. Because this is actually money demand. The equilibrium in the money market is where money supply, real money supply, equals money demand. So we combine them both and we get the AD, aggregate demand. Well, basically, the relation here is that um, output depends on any policy change. We could have monetary policy or we could have fiscal policy. If we have monetary policy, we have an expansion in the money um, supply that will affect positively output. Remember, an expansion in the money supply brings down the interest rate, which increases investment, which will increase the output. Now remember that an increase in the government expending or at cutting taxes uh, will increase the IS increase the interest rate, and increase output. So that's why it depends positively on G and negatively on T. When, when taxes are cut, then the output increases. Now we can say that any variation in a variable that is not prices will shift the ISLM. But that also will shift the AD. Now, I say other than prices because if we, for example, increase the price level, then that will uh, decrease the overall real money stock in the economy, the real money supply, and that is a shift to the left of these uh, real money supply, which will increase the nominal interest rate, and that is just uh, a shift up in the uh, LM, and an increase in the nominal interest rate will lower uh, investment because the, the the nominal interest rate paid uh, for bonds is higher, so the opportunity cost of investing is also higher, so pe uh, firms will just decrease investment. And then, if, the, if, if investment goes down, then aggregate demand also goes down because investment is a part of aggregate demand. And also that leads to a decrease in output on aggregate terms. So, increasing prices will decrease output. But, since we plot prices and output in the same graph, that is just the a movement along the curve. When prices increase, output decrease, and that's a movement along.